Good morning, folks. In 94 angstroms, any major solar activity flashes brightly. It's just low-level activity here, and that's a good thing because Helio viewers lagging by nearly 36 hours, leaving us to watch SDO on ISWA and on the NASA website. Let's take a peek at what we'll be looking for today. We still have a number of plasma filaments on the Earth-facing disk. Without HD detail from Helio viewer, it might be harder to spot the thin dark ropes twisting around, but it's certainly worth a try. One of those filaments on the south slid back into the sun and popped its tail in the corona, leaving much more surface activity than the filament actually warranted. In terms of solar flares, it's still a major struggle, and yet, the sunspots continue to grow. The northern active region looks to have spread out a bit and will likely not flare, but I will go ahead and confirm either delta class or some major, major delta potential for it to exist here where blue and red interact. We'll be monitoring the incoming spots to the north as well. In the gamma spectrum, we got double tapped yesterday after Lynx cave us in the morning. Canis Venetici did it in the afternoon. Three days of solar wind here show a marked decrease in pressure, especially as speed drops down. Maybe we'll actually get through today without a geomagnetic storm. Our incoming southern negative corona hole retains all that power, and she's coming in to continue the earthquake and volcano uptick. Top rumble in the last 24 hours was merely a 5.9 in Taiwan, but we also saw a volcano make moves beneath our feet. The alerts have begun here. Also have some above average tremors in Oklahoma, but those could be frac related. Couple good news hits and one great one. A protostar has recently had a major brightening event. All the details found at the link below this video. Some of you have been following the Naples volcano situation with us for a long time. Well, Sentinel has just shown how much the land is moving. Centimeters by the month. Top story. Folks, we've discussed the evidence from both astrophysics and cultural history. Something chaotic happened in the sky and captured the focus of the entire world. Turns out, this chaos is likely to have taken place according to the experts, but they say it happened too long ago for any people to have seen it. Well, here's another major study finding that our system had a shift. They're still way off in timeline from any point where humans would have seen it, but... This movement of Jupiter is a foundational element of the cultural archetypes. This is a big story. On to the weather where a snowstorm in Colombia is the main event. Now I know it snows from time to time there due to their Paramo climate situation, but this is absurd, especially 300 miles from the equator. Here, there is one word, convergence. These will shift a bit eastward tonight, but these storms are what we've discussed was on deck for March since its first few days. Here comes the severe storms, and we've still got winter warnings to the north. In Europe, we've still got two wide lows churning up some weather on land and bringing it up from the Mediterranean, but other than southern lightning, my top watch is for the system still out to sea. This one could wrap in quickly for a lashing in the Emerald Isle. Down under. Nathan Remnant still kicking it up north with a strong convergence coming to the southeast. Those are our storm zones listed here, but I'd like to add southwestern New Zealand as well as that convergence is bound to move right at some point. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close, and scroll down and get your click on with the linked sources provided. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.